Hey everyone, um, so this video is the second part of the three part series on the round trip. This video is going to start exactly where we left off the last one and we have the application running in the background in the H2 um, in the H2 database and this video is about how we switch from the temporary 2MB limitation that we have to a much more persistent database. In this case we're going to be using MySQL for that. And uh, the goals of this video are obviously to learn how to change dependencies and to learn how to do some debugging. So there's going to be a lot of errors that we're going to be getting, so maybe we learn how to deal with those too. Um, and we're going to be learning how these tables are going to get created too. So these tables are entity framework, for instance, or persistence library. They kind of handle all the table creation and deletion on their own, so we don't need to typically touch anything. So you'll see how that kind of works out on its own too. And we're going to be learning how to post new data and to see the changes happening on the back end using MySQL. So let's get started. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is go to POM and actually load the dependency for the MySQL uh, driver. So we're just going to highlight the whole thing, control plus um, backslash and then uncomment them and then comment out h2 so that's the first thing so now we're using mysql but as you can see that we're not actually using any database like we haven't specified the source or any credentials so it's not actually connected to any database so how do we connect that well that's where these documentation coming come in accessing data mysql so you can i'll share the link you can read if you want to but this application dot properties essentially what specifies the connection the route Right, so we're just going to copy the whole thing and paste it in application properties. Okay. So now we have this and let's let's actually create a new schema so that we can get the whole thing working. So I go to my MySQL workbench and I click on plus and I'm creating a new connection. So let's call this connection commerce 309. And I'll just leave everything default, test connection and I get an error. It says that failed to connect. And um, in Windows, this error could just simply be because the MySQL services is not running. So I just look for services and I see if MySQL is running or not. And here it doesn't seem to be running. So let's just start it. Let's run the test connection again. And yes, it's running now. I'm just going to enter my password. And and it seems to be working. So let's access our database. And and as you can see in this connection, uh, we don't really have a scheme for Commons 309 up till this point. So let's create a new scheme. So this button, create new scheme, this, you just press this and you write Commons 309 round trip. So this is the name of our schema. We click apply, it shows an SQL um, entry and we just say apply and just the schema just got made as you can see on the left and let's just close the connection for now and let's go back and kind of specify to our application what we just did so if you look at this uh, the application dot properties what have we specified the first thing we've specified is that we want the hibernate to be updating automatically our database which means if we have an entity which is not reflected in the table we want new tables to be created and I think it even deletes um, unnecessary tables and this is kind of going to be handling a lot of things automatically this is usually what happens again with entity framework or um, in this case hibernate library and well, GPA and the next one we're going to be specifying our data source so what is our data source um, okay let's let's go back to our connection and copy connection string so let's do that let's just copy connection string and i'll get rid of this whole thing and i'll just paste this and actually i don't even need to enter root at because i'm going to be specifying the username below so i'll just copy root and I replace that with the username. So I am connecting as root and I just place that. And my schema 
as I already know, is Gomez 309 round trip. I just created that. So that's our schema. Uh, this is the connection um, and the password. So my password is a little sensitive, so I'm just going to take it on the side, enter my password, and just close application for now. And that's it. So we have specified in application.properties what schema we want to connect to. And over here, we've mentioned the MySQL database. And so we're good. We can just stop and rerun. And let's see what happens. So again, the reason why I'm kind of doing this is kind of to show you what potential errors you can be getting. So one of the first things that you'll notice is the fact that MySQL drivers kind of failed to load or make the connection. Um, it, it, it finished with an exit code 1, exit code 1 is always an error and if you look at the error it says data source script database initializer defined in class positive. So it, 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 the database initializer uh, failed and we've kind of done everything by the book so it should work and the reason why it's not working is when you start uh, a Java program, Maven kind of loads a lot of um, libraries for you for efficiency sake right at the beginning and so a lot of compilation, a lot of stuff has already been done for H2 and not for MySQL. So all you have to do is close this project and just reopen it. And IntelliJ it just reopens to whatever you were doing last. And so what's going to happen is, and this is a little time consuming, but what's happening, it's kind of reloading the libraries this time around to use for MySQL. It's kind of optimizing everything for MySQL rather than H2. Again, if you want to shift back to H2, you'll have to probably do this again. <clears throat> Might not happen for other IDEs. It may or may not. Um, but you have to do this depending on you know how the ID kind of optimizes everything. Is it, uh, is it opening up? Oh, it's opening. Okay, taking a little while. And. Um, just for the test, just to kind of save time, what we're going to do is we'll actually start preparing some scripts. So as, as I previously told you, all of our database has become empty by this point because every time you close a running issue, it's just everything disappears. So let's prepare some potential um, new entries for a new database. So I'm just going to use this new question one and two uh, that I've prepared on Postman and I'm just going to use this endpoint uh, to post. So I'm going to post like two or three questions using this and let's see how that works. Um, I'm actually going to get connected over here too, so just to save time and get connected so we can actually look at our schema. So let's, uh, let's uh, look at our schema. Our schema doesn't have any table which makes sense. And as you can see this is taking Quite a bit of time to load, but this is really good. If you know that it's re-optimizing -op everything for MySQL, and we'll just run the thing. And so this is going to take a while, but this is where all the like the good stuff is happening in the background. Um, So, I think it just ended compilation. Oh, it's still importing. Okay. The build is, I think, still ongoing. Oh, yeah, now it's running. So, the compilation, the whole process is done. 
should be optimized and it's saying that it has initialized the database and let's see Uh, once again, not precisely sure why. Hmm. Again, there's a lot of stuff happening in the background, so it's it's not always easy to debug, you know, and figure out where precisely have they have they not loaded the things as they should be um, com.mysql.jdbc.driver this is deprecated the new driver classes oh I didn't know that okay let's just copy this and let's update this but yeah it's always easy oh it's, it's working it's running it's uh, beautiful and and let's let's see what happened to our mysql so let's just go to mysql let's just refresh this and you can see that there's a new table and the new table is called trivia and it has columns called id answering questions and so these things are automatically generated for us we don't need to actually do anything and let's let's see uh, let's post new answer question one and two and three and if we go to our endpoint for trivia all we should be able to see all these things so this is coming right from our database and let's let's go to our mysql and see this table so if you right click it um, right click trivia you select limit top 100 so we can actually see this in our database and if you stop running it and rerun it this will still be there so thank you so much everyone i hope you guys are following through and we'll see you in the next part in which we'll be learning how the front end will be communicating with our database thank you